On August the 6th, Ukrainian forces invaded Russia's Kursk region, capturing hundreds of miles of territory, but Ukraine is paying for the invasion by surrendering cities in the east and destroying its most precious equipment. As Forbes analyst David Axe writes, the 21st Mechanized Brigade is taking part in the offensive in the Kursk region, which has the most advanced and best Western tanks in its arsenal. STRV-122 stroke Leopard 2A6 these two types differ mainly in the length of the main guns, and according to videos from social networks, one of these tanks was shot down by a drone or hit a mine during a battle near the village of Vesyaloy. The analyst emphasizes that each STRV-122 and Leopard 2A6 is precious, as Ukraine received only 10 STRV-122s from Sweden and 21 Leopard 2A6 from Germany and Portugal, all in 2023. By the spring, about 20 of these tanks remained. All of them belonged to the 21st Mechanized Brigade, and it is unlikely to expect new deliveries. While the Ukrainian Army's other Leopard 2 brigades, the 33rd and 155th Mechanized Brigades, operate older and more numerous Leopard 2A4 models and have received several batches of the new tanks to replace battlefield losses, the 21st Mechanized Brigade, with its newer tank models, is unlikely to receive any new vehicles. As Axe notes, the Swedish and German armies are struggling to maintain their own tank brigades, neither plans to part with their best tanks anymore. At the same time, the analyst notes, there is evidence that the 21st Mechanized Brigade has already lost at least one tank in the Kursk region, which burned after being hit by an explosive FPV drone. The Ukrainian commanders are willing to risk their last STRV-122s and Leopard 2A6s in Kursk, speaks to the importance they attach to the Ukrainian invasion of the region. The invasion effort is costing the Ukrainians vulnerable cities and vital transport assets. For now, that is a price they are willing to pay. The analyst concludes, A few people southern Israel on Thursday were seen near the fragments of an Iranian missile that was intercepted by Israel near Arad. The Middle East moved closer to a long-feared regional war the day after Iran fired a barrage of missiles at Israel and Israel said it began limited ground incursions into Lebanon targeting the Iran-backed Hezbollah militia. Israel said it intercepted many of the missiles, and officials in Washington said U.S. destroyers assisted in Israel's defense. Iran said most of its missiles hit their targets. There were no immediate reports of casualties. On Tuesday night, Iran fired a barrage of missiles at Israel in what it said was a retaliation for attacks that killed leaders of Hezbollah, Hamas, and the Iranian military. It referenced Hezbollah leader Hassan Nasrallah and Revolutionary Guard General Abbas Noforishan, both killed in an Israeli airstrike last week in Beirut. It also mentioned Ismail Haniya, a top leader in Hamas who was assassinated in Tehran in a suspected Israeli attack in July. Four Russian journalists went on trial in Moscow on Wednesday on charges over their alleged work for a group founded by the late Russian opposition politician Alexei Navalny. Antonina Faverskaya, Artyom Kriger, Sergei Karolin and Konstantin Gabov all deny the charges of involvement with an extremist group that have been levied against them. Faverskaya and Kriger worked with Sodavision, an independent Russian news outlet that covers protests and political trials. Gabov is a freelance producer who has worked for multiple organizations, including Reuters. Carolyn is a freelance video journalist, he has done work for Western media outlets, 
including the Associated Press. As the four journalists were led into the courtroom by police on Wednesday, a crowd of supporters greeted them with applause. Addressing reporters from behind the glass, Artyom Krieger cast the case against him and his fellow journalists as a cautionary tale and urged journalists still in Russia to leave the country. Antonina Faverskaya spoke about hope and suggested that, everything that is happening now, the darkness that surrounds us, it is not forever and we will definitely see the country that Alexei dreamed of and will definitely live in a country where there will be freedom, rights, where journalists and other people will not be jailed for their opinions. Shortly after the hearing began, the judge ordered to hold the proceedings behind closed doors upon a request from the prosecution, even though the defense objected to it. If convicted, the four journalists face up to six years in prison.